Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, <coughs> the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going, to, you're going to need it. Make sure you go through all the math problems from this book. If there is anything at all that gives you trouble, we, already, we have actually already solved almost all the problems from this book. If there is anything that gives you trouble, you will find the solution to that problem from day number 251 through 400. The math problems that this book contains are almost all the same math problems the, and on the same exact page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Original solutions tend to be lengthier, they tend to be a little bit in depth. Right now, we are solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions from this book right here, the GRE General Test, the 10th edition. Because the other two books that I just showed you, they do not simply contain enough quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important, they are still big part of the exam. So to get some extra practice, we've been solving problems from here. We are on page number 200 right now. Please turn to it. If you do not own this book, try to obtain one from somewhere. It's very important. Page number 200 is where we are. Problem number one. Problem number one being problem number one is pretty straightforward and very simple. So simple in fact that when it was given in the real exam, 95% of the people who took the exam had absolutely no trouble with it at all, they got it right. Here's the question, 5 times 2 plus 2 plus 5 versus 50. That's all, that's all, that's all, that's all there is. It's very simple, 2 plus 2, we do the parenthesis first, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 5 is going to be 9, so it's going to be 5 times 9, which is 45, 45 versus 50, the answer is B. As you can see, there is nothing to it. Number two. Number two, we are told that J minus K, number two, was, number two, the percentile was 83. J minus K, we are told, is two. And we are told that K minus six is equals four. And we are being asked to compare J versus K. Let's find out, shall we? K minus six. K minus 6, we are told, is 4, that implies, that implies that K must be 10. Bring the 6 to the other side. Once we have the value of K equals to 10, we can put that value of K in here, and we find that J minus 10 equals, 12, uh, equals 2, which implies that J must be 12. J is 12, K we found out to be 10, therefore the answer is A. Let's do number 3. Number 3. Question number three says, Richard's salary, question number three, which was 81%, we are told that Richard's salary, Richard's salary, which is more than $10,000, we are told, is 75% of Sandra's salary. And we are told that Ted's salary is 80% of Richard's salary. So far so good. Let's see what they want us to compare. Once I tell you, once I put down what, what they want you to compare, I want you to pause the video and do the problem yourself. They want us to compare column S versus or column, column A. They want us to compare S versus T. They want us to compare Sandra's salary versus Ted's salary. So let's see what we can do here. Richard's salary, R right here, Richard's salary, we are told is 
is 75% of Sandberg's salary. The fact, the fact that it is more than $10,000, the fact that it is more than $10,000, it does warm the cockles of one's heart, but it really doesn't serve any purpose. Do you understand? So let's pick up numbers. Simplest, simplest, easiest, quickest way to do here, do this problem, is to make up numbers here, plug in numbers here, and we're, when we're dealing with percentage problem, it's always a good idea to plug in 100. So we're going to start with Sandra. Richard is 75% of Sandra, so let's pretend that Sandra is 100. Let's pretend that Sandra's salary is 100. If Sandra is 100, then Richard is going to be 75. Richard is going to be 75. So, and then they go on to tell us that Ted's salary, Ted is 80% of Richard. Ted is 80% of Richard. Sandra, we already know, is 100. And Ted is 80% of Richard. Richard, we know, is 75. But 80%, 80% of 75, 80% of 75, we really don't have to worry about how much it is. We really don't care what that is. We simply have to realize that 80% of 75, whatever it is, obviously it's going to be less than 100. Even 100% of 75 is just 75, it's going to be less than 100. So the answer is A. 100, 100 in other words, is more than 80% of 75. Don't waste your time trying to figure out what 80% of 75 is. This, this question is not, these questions are not called quantitative computation. They're called quantitative comparison. Hence the emphasis here. Don't compute anything unless it is absolutely necessary. In in vast majority of the cases, you don't have to compute anything. Just compare the two things. 80% of some amount that is less than 100, it doesn't even have to be 75, any amount at all. 80% of the amount that is less than 100, it's got to be less than 100, of course. Let's, let's continue. Number four. Question number four. We have to compare 5 third times 0.6 we are told, this is number 4. 70% of people who took the exam got this question right. We are being asked to compare 5 third of 0.6 versus 1. Versus 1. Well, what they want you to know, what they, what they want to see here, what they want to see in here, in here is do you know your fifths? This has to do with this fifth has to do with knowing. This has to do with having to do. Having to. Uh, this has to do with uh, knowing your fifths. For example, for I'm just I'm just going to quickly go over all of them. For example, one fifth. We have to realize is same as two over ten, which is 0.2. Two fifths, of course, is same as four over ten, which is 0.4. And three over five is same as six over ten, which is. 0.6, which is what we have here. And finally, 4 over 5 is the same as 8 tenths, which is 0.8. We must know, we must know our fifths. We must know our fifths in percentage, in decimal, in fraction. You must know your fifths. You must know your tenths. You must know your fifths. You must know your quarters. You must know your eighths. You must know your thirds. And you must know your sixths for this exam. It saves a great deal of time. You must know these things in fractional form, in decimal form, and in percentage form. 0 0.6 as we can see, 0 0.6 we can see is 3 fifths. 0.6 is 3 fifths. So we substitute here. So we have 5 thirds times 3 fifths. 3 is cancelled out and 5 cancels out. This is 1. 1 versus 1. The answer is C. The answer is C. This problem should take no more than 10 seconds. No more than 10 seconds if you know your fifths. Let's do the next one, number five. Number five. Number five is a geometry question. We have two lines that are intersecting right here. We are told that this is angle X. We are told that this is angle Y. We are told that this is angle Z. And what we are being asked to compare is, this is number 5. 
78% of the people had no problem with it whatsoever. What we're being asked to compare is x plus y, x plus y versus 180, 180 minus z. Let's see how they compare. What we need to understand is that if this is z degrees, then this angle right here also has to be these degrees. These are vertical angles. These are called vertical angles. Sometimes they are called referred to as opposite angles, but the proper terminology is vertical angles, and vertical angles are always equal. When two lines intersect, when, I, when two lines intersect, this angle is going to equal this angle, and that angle is going to equal that angle. The opposite angles are always equal. So if this is z, if this is z, then this would have to be z. Are you with me so far? Now, we look at this line right here, this straight line right here. And what do we know about this straight line? The straight line makes 180 degrees. The straight line makes 180 degrees, which means x plus z plus y has to equal 180. But we're not interested in x plus z plus y, we're interested in x plus y. We want to know how much x plus y is. We don't want the z here, we just want x plus y. Let's subtract z from both sides. If we subtract z from both sides, we can get rid of the z from here. We are left with x plus y, x plus y. Now, that's what that is, equals, equals this quantity, 180, minus z, which is exactly what we have here. And we just found out that x plus y, we just found out that x plus y, we just found out that x plus y equals 180 minus z. Well, if they are equal to each other, the answer is c. The answer to this problem is c. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.